as soon as you hear the beep, everybody that's around the car goes. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver. I hope you're doing very well. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Tesla Model X and specifically the doors. Before we start looking at the doors, we've got to look at the key because this has a really unique way of opening all the doors. You've probably seen it before. You open the front by double, double tapping the front. You open the boot by double tapping the boot. And you open the two side doors by double tapping the side doors. So it looks like a little Model X and you can control all of the doors as you would think through here. And then a triple tap on the top closes all of the doors all together. Debatably its biggest feature, the Model X's doors have this falcon wing mechanism which basically has two hinges in them. It also has front doors here which will open themselves. As you can see sadly mine got damaged in the IKEA car park the other day by a Nissan Leaf owner. But anyway, the doors can open themselves like that and then they can also close themselves like that. Very similar to these doors, they're fully powered. Now a lot of people say it's overkill and it's not needed but trust me once you have these doors you want them. These Falcon Wing doors are probably the biggest reason I bought this Model X. We got this car as our family car for our daughter when she came along and it served so well. It stopped me from having backache, from having to like bend through weird doors when putting like the baby seat in. I've even saved myself from getting wet a couple of times because of them because they do obviously cover you while you're in here and they're absolutely bloody fantastic. But I hate them. I absolutely hate them at the same time. It's, it's a love-hate relationship. If you have a Model X, you probably feel the same. These things are amazing, but they've also made me look like the biggest douche ever when I've tried to use them and they failed. So let's use them a bit and just see what they do. Trust me, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a bit weird. Even I don't know what's gonna happen. This is actually the average gap between two cars at a parking lot. I just went to a local parking lot to see. 30 centimeters-ish. This is a little bit wider actually at the back, but it gets a bit closer at the front. Is the average between two cars. And uh, that's not in, in taking these, obviously. So normally you'll have two wing mirrors, which will be about here. So hopefully the wing mirrors will go in and whatnot. But as you can see, it's a pretty tight gap. Will these doors open is always the question I get asked. So inside, it will show on the side of the car that it knows that there's something close to it. So when you open the door, it kind of slowly comes out to the amount it thinks. But you can see here, it's left maybe about 10 centimeters there and you can push it a little bit further. But what it does do is you'll see that there, that's it stopping. So it stops you from pushing it further. So it knows where it is. And this is really impressive. And this is actually using sensors that are built into the door here that can see through the side of the door, uh, which is really, really good because then you don't have like the circle parking sensors everywhere. But obviously the big problem is gonna be with this door here because if I'm stood next to it, there's no way this is going to open. Oh, okay, it did open, but into me. That's actually quite interesting because I've never had this door open into me like that before. That actually did hit into me, so maybe it didn't notice me between the wall. I'm not sure, that's a little strange. Okay, so I'm going to close that and I'm going to step out the way. And we're just going to try that again, so let's open it and see how far up it goes. So you see, it knows that there is something there and it did a different kind of hinge movement. And this is where the door is quite smart, but not perfect, as you can see here. It's got quite a lot. It's got quite a lot of space, actually here, that it could open up and give you a little bit more space to get in because currently, I can't get in like this. So what you've got to do is use the switch inside and manually pull it up. It really shouldn't open into me, so let's see. Let's just see what it does. <laughs> I don't know why it does that. Previously when I've tested it, it'll do that beep noise and it just won't open. This time I'm gonna fully lock the car first and then we're gonna try and open the doors and be really close to it. Cause I think maybe because one door was unlocked, I don't know, I don't think it was doing what it normally does. So you can see the wing mirrors have gone in now. The car is locked. I'm gonna stand right close to it here. I'm gonna open it using the key fob. So you can see there it came to about here and then it stopped because it wanted to start opening the side door. So you have to give it actually quite a bit of space when you open the door. Let's put it down one more time.
There you go. So you, you have to be a meter for it to open like gracefully with its full, you know, beautiful look and whatnot. And then when you get in, you can just sit down and press the button. My seat's really far back, but you can just press the button and obviously inside you go and it's really nice and cozy. Now inside, when you're in here, the doors do feel slightly close to you, but because you've got the glass next to you here and you've got the glass above you, you have a really nice open feel. Um, and to open the doors inside, you've got switches down here. And for the front doors, you just open them like normal handles, uh, or obviously you can just use the key. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And I think that's what everybody's love-hate relationship is with the Model X, and especially with these doors. Same with the front doors. Sometimes they're great, but sometimes they're not. Let me show you this. When you get into the car and sit down and put your foot on the brake, the door will automatically close for you, which is absolutely awesome. On top of the roof, there's a couple of sensors. You can see them, they're like little buttonholes on the top of the roof. And that's what determines how close the roof is and whether it can open up fully. And actually in the menu on the entertainment screen, you can actually see that it shows you that there's something close to the roof and that it won't open fully. What you can do is actually preset it so that if you know you're going into an area where you want it to open fully, you can set it so that it just opens fully. Now, as the rear doors go, they're super easy. They open just with one button at the back. And um, yeah, right, they, go, they go pretty high up and it's pretty easy to get into. And there's only one more button, which is just up here. I've never had an issue with the boot. Ever. Oh no, actually I have once, which was at the Bristol airport, where it opened up quite high. And sometimes I don't know if it fully judges that this spoiler is on top, and uh, the spoiler got very close. It didn't hit, but it got way too close, and I don't think that the car saw uh, the roof was there, if that makes sense. It was just luck. Now have you ever done this? The top sensor, the ultrasonic sensor here, when you put your hand over it, obviously it's then judging how far away you are, but if you touch it, you can actually feel the, like, it's like an electric shock feeling coming through it. Just try it next time, uh, Tesla Model X owners. Really, it's a little bit, it's a little bit weird, but it's quite cool. The front is pretty simple. It's pretty basic in what it does, but it's actually really useful. To have actually a boot at the front is really strange, but it works really well and you can put a lot of stuff in here, especially if you really need to back and, and tightly uh, park your car. But when it comes to closing it, you have to do it manually, slowly. <laughs> It's a bit of a shame, uh, but you can see it comes down to here, which is like a little bit of a gap. And then all you need to do is just give it a little push and hold, and then it's done. Nothing fancy, but it's a frunk and it's great. Now these doors aren't actually perfect. Holly and I, she's recording, have actually both had issues with these doors in the past, with them actually hitting us, closing on us, and sometimes opening not quite correctly. Mainly it's like, we'll be putting Ravenna in, so if you come a little bit closer, we'll be putting Ravenna in, uh, in her car seat, and our key will be in our pocket, or it might be here, and it, it tightens and it presses. And what happens is the door closes on your head. Now, the first time, or the first few times this has happened, because this has happened probably, we're in the tens now, uh, it, was, it was kind of a surprise and a shock but now you as soon as you hear the beep everybody that's around the car goes like that as soon as you hear the beep let me find the key and it doesn't matter either what one you're actually pressing so even if i press the boot for example you get that noise and you'll hear the noise actually comes from this speaker so as soon as you hear that trust me you get shit scared and you think that this is going to close down on you something that other people don't know about these as well is you can actually take off these vents uh or i guess they're the speaker grills really easily and when you pop these off there's a manual release so that if the electronics fail that's how you actually get into the doors just in case you didn't know uh, and there's also another close button just up here as well so what does it feel like to have this closed on your head? Well, it feels just like this. I'm going to close it from here. It really doesn't do too much. You're not going to be stood under that. I'm 6'3", by the way. So if you're 6'4", that's probably going to be the problem. You're probably going to be doing something here. So, you know, if I'm going to be putting my baby in the seat, I'm going to be doing all these things. Oh, okay, okay. It's an inconvenience. As you can see, it doesn't go back up. So if I press it again for it to go up, yeah, so once it goes down, you press it again, it'll go up. So whenever it hits any part of your body, it's... Ooh. Okay, that bit. Because I hit, like, the end bit, I kind of slid under. Norm normally, whenever you hit it, it's not a problem. Um, I've opened the other side accidentally. But as you can see, you're going to hit your head. It's fairly soft. It's not too bad. Now, what about the arms? So if you have an arm in and it's kind of relaxed, you'll see how much you need to touch... So it kind of pushed my arm, so my arm fell down with it, but then eventually it just kind of stopped. If there's anything here and you close it, it's just gonna close anyway. Even if you press the interior one, 
So if you're sat here and you press it, it still doesn't know that you're there. Ooh, okay. Which is a little bit strange. Now in the manual, it does say that it doesn't always see what is inside. So there are sensors in this door and all around it, but it can't sense me here, which is a little bit strange in my opinion. So you see, I've just got my arm here. I'm just gonna hold it here. It doesn't actually hurt at all. What it does is it just kind of slowly crushes. Holly, if you come in a little bit. So you can see, I've literally just got this bit here. So my arm's just kind of against, it can't go any further back. So it's not gonna be jarred or anything. And again, when we do it, so this worst case scenario, obviously having your arm crushed or what if you have like your kid's arm crushed, you know, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, but it, it doesn't hurt. But again, it'll be just a surprise. So you can kind of see from there, there you go, a little bit red and it's kind of like, I don't know, mushed up a little bit of skin. But other than that, it's not too bad. Now these doors are a little bit different um, because they kind of close very, very slowly. So for example, uh, if I close all the car doors, so I put my hand here, a tiny touch will stop that. Whereas a tiny touch on this, it doesn't stop it. So with this one, for example, if you've got your arm here, obviously it's gonna be glass and this does have quite a lot of flex in it. So I'm not gonna test that, but you'd be fine. And again, down here, as I said from the last one, it doesn't hurt. It just kind of like, I don't know. It's cause it's soft actually inside. It's not too bad. Again, I'm trying to get it on, on like the worst area like that so people say that it's very very damaging and stuff but it's really not it, it's not too bad now the one issue I do have with these doors is when they automatically open now we actually chose not to have that on our car because of this and we don't want to be that person that's just like walking near their car the door opens and someone destroys it finally though the crush test of the rear door now this one's probably um, the least likely to happen. I don't know why you would get your arm crushed or anything in here. So again, if you're just in here doing things, the door doesn't sense. As you can see, the door doesn't sense and um, it just will crush you. So I, I, I kind of expected, because when we bought the car, and Holly, you back me up for this. We were in the Tesla showroom and I put my arm in the door and I said, will it stop? And what did they say? This they said it would stop, stop right? Yeah. But last second, I was told not to put my arm in and the guy from the Tesla store, put his arm in and it did exactly what I just showed there. That's right, right? Right. So I think there's a slight bit of misconfusion where people think it's not gonna crush you or anything. It will do, it's a door. It's like any other door, it's, it's gonna crush you. But yeah, this one's not too bad again. It's just, uh, I don't know how else to demonstrate it. I don't know how else you're gonna be using a boot. So like, oh no, <laughs> it's really not bad. And this, this one, this one is, yeah, it's not bad at all. And with most of these, you know, it, a tiny stop on these ones again, We'll stop it really happily. And it closes slowly because it's got that soft close. So you're not going to get the slam. Whereas the front doors do that little bit of slamming. Don't worry about getting your arms crushed. It's not that bad. And here's a little test of the charger port to see if that could crush our fingers. So, and we lock the car. There you go. You can see that that's a very, very weak flap. There's literally nothing there that's going to do any damage to anybody. Let's try that one more time. How do I close this? Yeah, it's really, really weak. That's pretty much everything I can show you within the doors themselves with them just being here. Now I've had another couple of questions from you guys asking, can you drive with the doors up? What happens if you open the doors while driving? Let's go have a look at that. Before I do, I just wanna say, I was gonna test putting my hands and stuff in here, but after testing with my arm, I think if anything smaller than your arm got caught in here, it would be pretty bad. So I'm not gonna try that. And especially up here, I feel that this could be like the guillotine of the falcon wing door area it could be pretty bad i guess that means we just got to answer the final question and try driving with the doors up 